So last night I decided to do a little bit of an experiment and I've set up a weather station right by my telescope. And I was curious how much wind could I have before it really started to ruin my images. So that's what this uh, little video is gonna be about today. It's an experiment in wind and images. So hang on. Hey guys, so sometimes curiosity just totally will kill the cat here and I have two nights in a row that are clear but one night says it's going to be windy. So how does wind affect my telescope and guiding? Um, should I totally stay away from a windy night or should I give it a chance? So out of curiosity tonight, I set up a weather station in my front yard. I had one of these Explore Scientific, Explore Better Living um, weather stations. It's the 5-in-1 Wi-Fi. I won it at a uh, stop party a few months ago, and I've been waiting on my observatory before I decided to install it. But tonight seemed to be the night that maybe I should install it. So I installed it up near my telescope and it's sitting about telescope height. So I'm not really worried about the wind that's up high. I'm worried about the wind that's going to affect my telescope. And currently the wind is at 6.4 miles per hour. And if you are looking at my screen right now, it is going a bit crazy. Uh, my telescope's been set up for a few nights. I know the guiding is spot on where it's at. And these are the worst numbers I have seen in several days. So clearly, wind affects guiding and taking images. But let's see what this first image is going to look like when it comes out. Let's see. It says 40 seconds to go. Uh, let's go back and look at the guide chart because that's a little bit more interesting. Come on, there we go. Whoops. It likes to do that sometimes. Oh, let's just wait. 27, 5, 23. Keep going. I know you're getting bored with this already. But this is a five minutes exposure. I am taking a mosaic panel of the Horsehead Nebula. I have been working on this for several months now dedicating one night per filter. Well, now I'm about to run out of Orion and it's hitting my trees. So instead of getting nine hours on the target, I'm down to about six hours on the target. So that part's a little bit disappointing. So I'm running up against the clock here. And let's zoom into this image and I can already tell you it's bad. You can see the wind picked up and just took things away. And my wind is up to six miles per hour, but it is more of a breezy because it's toggling between uh, two miles an hour and six miles an hour. So it must be a little bit gusty outside. There we go. That doesn't look so bad. Where's it at now? 4.2. I guess my curiosity is, what is my tolerance? When do I have to say, no, I am not going to image? Or maybe if I put a wind barrier up, would that help me some? All right, that's looking really good right now. That's about what's my standard been for the last several nights. has been floating between 0.55 and 0.67. So that's a good guide. But I have a feeling that this image that's about to appear is going to be terrible. I have no doubt about that. We are down to five seconds, two seconds. Oops, let me go ahead and cancel that one out because he was bad. All right, and even this picture looks really bad. We'll zoom in just a little bit. And you can see how bad is bad. 
There we go. We've got some stars here looking like a piece of rice. And I am on the Sulfur 2 filter and Alnitac has this nice little reflection star. Um, I'm probably going to have to fake this out in post-processing and round up those edges some. That darn star is just too bright. I'm going to go ahead and mark this as another bad image just to take him out of my totals. And I don't have to worry about him later. And let's go back to what our guide chart looks like. All right, so a dither. I totally expect to see a dither in there. And I have a feeling there might be a thin cloud going through here too. Oh yeah, no, that's not thin. That's a rather thick cloud coming in. So what is that going to do to me? Probably just take me out. And I'm probably just sitting here wasting my time taking these images when I should probably wait just another hour and uh, hold up for those clouds to clear out some. But the wind is at 2.6 miles per hour, so at this moment I feel like I have a very low tolerance. So maybe when the weatherman tells me it's going to be breezy, I should just not set up. Because right now, when it was at two or less miles per hour, I was doing okay. Anything higher than that, it's just having heart failure. So let's pause this for an hour and um, come back and see what we get then. Well, it's a couple hours later and the clouds have finally gone away, but the breeze is still hanging around and it is bouncing between three and four miles per hour and my guiding still looks like crap. Yep, I said it. It does not look good at all. So the next set of curiosity is, as we know, we can't get a five minute exposure. So I'm knocking it down to four minutes and just seeing if I can salvage something out of this night. You know, it's, it's terrible to have to waste a clear night, even though it is windy out. Let's see. My total here is 1.53 arc seconds which is really just too high for me. This camera and telescope combo needs a max amount of 1.37. Anything higher than that, I will start to see dragging in my stars. I really prefer to keep it at one or less. So I'm not having really high hopes for this. But I guess reality is we already knew that if it was windy out, it was not a good time to try to image but I was really hopeful but I have to say that the weatherman did say 12 and it is not 12 out let's see it just dropped to 2.7 loving this little weather station out there that's pretty awesome that's probably one of the best door prizes I've won all right it's dropping back down 1.3 let's clear it out and see where it is now I've got some pretty good stars here for guiding in, and I love this multi-star guiding that PhD2 has come out with. So I'm guiding on one star, but it's also looking at all these other stars, and that way it's not overreacting for anything. And my focus is pretty good. I can't complain with that. Let's see, out of the gate, we're starting pretty good. 0 0.54, 0 0.65. Come on, reel it back in. It seems to be the RA that's needing some corrections. All right, the image is just about done. Let's switch over to Sequence Generator Pro. 16 seconds to go and we will get our first image. And let's see what a four minute image looks like. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna set this up to actually pause after this image. That way I can decide if I wanna drop it down to something shorter. All right, there's our horse head and flame. It's part of a two panel mosaic that I am creating right now. And I'm doing this in a narrow band. I've never done narrow band on the horse head. I thought it would be something really cool. And check this out. It looks like a four minute exposure, even with that bouncing around, looks pretty darn good. That one is a keeper. 
So I'm going to go back over to PhD2 and take a look at it and see where it's hanging out. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Look at that. That must have been a good little breeze that kicked by. Wow. Ooh. 2.69. That's going to leave a mark on my photo. Wishful thinking. Ouch. Look at that. Okay. I wonder if we're near the meridian. Let's open this up. Let's go to the telescope. And time. Nope. It's already gone through meridian flip. And it wasn't that long ago that it did that. All right, why is it having heart failure now? Let's look at the weather machine here. 2.6, 2.6 miles per hour. It's 38 degrees outside. No snow. We are in the south. It's very rare if we get snow. If we ever get something like snow, it's more like snice because it's more ice than snow. And wow, I wonder if something bumped into it out there. I've been noticing on my cameras outside that we have a lot of fox running through the yard at night and I have quite a few deer. In fact, I've got one buck out there that comes through the yard who has one antler. Kind of reminds me of the, um, the Grinch, the new Grinch where, well, I guess it's the original Grinch, the cartoon, where he took a antler and tied it onto his dog's head and called him a reindeer. Well, that's kind of what this deer looks like. It's really kind of cool. Okay, well, that guiding just went all kinds of bad. But you know what? Guess what I didn't do? I didn't start my next image. It's been sitting here on pause this whole time. All right. Let's take it down to three minutes. That's what, 180 seconds? That sounds right. Let's resume and let's see if I can get a three minute image out of here. Even though that four minute one looked really good, but that guiding, wow, that is just insane. Let's clear this out and let's start over. Let's see where it hangs out at. All right, starting good out of the gate. Let's see display the target you know this is where the star is moving you see where he's at it's nice if we can keep the stars all moving in the center of the bullseye it's these strays that are the really high peaks and lows on the graph all right so let's hold our breath here it's at 0 0.61 0 0.65 and really, it's this total number that I look at here in the parentheses. And I look at my image scale, which is 1.37. And I get that with looking at Astronomy Tools website. All right, that is looking really, really nice. What's the weatherman say? We are down to 1.7 miles per hour, which is not bad. That's giving me a really nice graph. If we're lucky, it'll hang. So do you guys sit out there and watch your guide graph all night long? Or do you just kind of set it and walk away and pray and look at all your images later? Typically on a weeknight, I set it, forget it, and kind of go to bed. I'm just a little bit lazy like that. Seems like all the good nights are during the week and I have to go to bed. But this is the rare occasion where it's a Friday night. So I'm going to sit here and stare at this graph and see how it does. Right now it is looking really good. And this is what I would typically get with everything set up as it is right now. Now I haven't polar aligned in about a week. It is sitting out there on the JMI wheelie bar with the um, new feet on it. It has not moved at all. In fact, on one side of that cart, Two of the wheels are not even on the ground at all. They're totally free spinning. Um, the other th two sides, they are on the ground. I just happen to be on a slight incline. So I'm actually really trusting this out there like that, having knowing that two wheels are not on the ground, but 
That sucker's rock solid. I can't complain at all. All right, my graph still looks good. Picture is complete. Let's take a look at it. All right. Oops, there we go. Let's zoom into it. Okay, that's good. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it for the night. I am going to use three minute exposures. I am currently on the Sulfur 2 filter. And I think since I know I can run this up to about 2 a.m. before I hit the trees, let's see, it's 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. That's about another four hours. I've got two hours and 46 minutes here. And since I had to drop down to three minute exposures, I'm just going to take advantage of the, um, the shorter exposures and take more pictures. So I need about four hours. Here we go. You notice I'm looking at the time remaining here. And that is just a guesstimate. All right. Let's just say 80 images tonight. And that's where I'm going to leave it. One last look at the graph. It looks good. There's my dither. I can handle this. And let's take a look at Pegasus and see where, look at that, my dew point. I don't have much dew to worry about tonight, which is great considering earlier tonight it was sitting up here about three quarters of the way up range. Now you'll see I've got three dew heaters connected. I have one on my telescope, the main imaging scope. I have one on the guide scope and I have a third one down on my reducer area between the focuser and the filter wheel. And that's only because I've had a lot of dew lately, a lot of moisture. So I'm guessing that the wind out there has been keeping it away. Oh, the wind is holding down pretty good. I can't complain. Guiding looks good. Image looks good. I'm going to call it a night. Well, good morning, everybody. I am back and I wanted to show you the final look of my graph on PhD2 uh, where my final images were taken. And you can see it's in the OMG state here. My total is at 3.35, which is crazy, crazy. My bullseye shows very few in the center and there's a whole bunch around on the outside. So I don't have a whole lot of high hopes for my final image. But let's pop over to Sequence Generator Pro and see what my final image looked like. Now it timed out. I had set a time of about 1.40, 1.45 in the morning to stop taking pictures because that's when I'll hit the trees. And let's see, this is the final image. Well, on the surface, it doesn't look so bad. And this is with the Sulfur 2. And you can see I do have some dragging. This is on a three minute exposure. It's not horrible. It's not fantastic, but who knows how it'll all stack out. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. It is a new style. I'm going to try to do more of you guys getting to see what I do during my imaging sessions. Now that I figured out how to record my outside computer on the inside where it's not so cold, but I had a lot of fun doing it and I hope you guys liked it. So please consider subscribing, like this video, share it with all your astro friends. Let's build this community. If you have questions, comments, leave them down below. I really appreciate them. You guys make my day when you do write to me. Uh, you can also reach me over there on amyastro.com and you can send me an email direct with your questions, comments, and if I can, I will make a video just for you. All right, don't forget, I'm over there on Patreon also where I offer a little bit extra. And right now I have a full PixInsight tutorial up there available with how I do things. It's a little bit different than a lot of other folks do things, um, but I walk you through it. There's videos online here on YouTube and I have the written workbooks and the files out there on Patreon. So consider following me over there. I've got links for everything down below. But your support on Patreon will help me keep this channel up and running. It has gotten a bit expensive, but that's my cause. 
Um, but it's me just wanting to do more. So if you guys are able to help me, I really, really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I appreciate all of you guys. Well, that's what I've got for you guys this week. I'm wishing everybody some great health, clear skies, and don't forget, I love each and every one of y'all. Goodbye, y'all. <laughs>